According to the latest stats, more than 50% of the market in the US is using an iPhone and Apple just announced a new iPhone 14 lineup. The iPhone 14, the 14 Plus, the 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max. So does that make the iPhone the better option for you right now? I started using Apple products with the iPhone 12 Pro two years ago after being an Android user my entire life. And since then I've been using iPhones exclusively. And to be honest, I'm not going back to Android anytime soon for a few but solid reasons. Let me explain. I said in a previous video that the iPhone 13 Pro is a complete iPhone iPhone, but now with the 14 Pro, it's now even better. I know I sound like an Apple ad, but it's the truth. I know it looks almost exactly the same as the iPhone 13 Pro from the outside, but internally they made a lot of changes. Starting from the camera, making it bigger and better in a lot of ways. Last year, I took a photo of the Milky Way with the iPhone 13 Pro, and now they made the camera two times better in low light. I can't wait to take photos of the Milky Way with the iPhone 14 Pro. They made the screen slightly better in direct sunlight, up to 1600 nits peak brightness and 2000 nits with HDR content. They finally added always on display the thing that we've been asking for for ages. They also finally removed the notch and added dynamic island. It's a pill shaped cutout. Come on up. What the heck is that name? They add a lot of other cool stuff as well like the car crash detection for example, the satellite mode, small things like these that I hope no one will ever need to use but it's good to have them there. But these are not the things that I want to focus on the most. I want to focus more on the software side because that's what matters the most for the Android user that wants to move to iOS. They already have an always on display. They already have great batteries and great displays. Not the best video though. And after two years of using iOS, I can kind of say that iOS is better than Android for most people. Let me explain. Since iOS 14, Apple has been adding a lot of features that a lot of Android users waited for to move to iOS, me included. Like the Files app, for example, the widgets on the home screen, the app drawer. And it's not only that. Let me walk you through why I stayed on iOS for the past two years and planning to do so for the next year. Animation, for example, on iOS is much better than Android. The dynamic island, for example that they just announced the amount of work they've done and the creativity that they have with this pill shape cutout and all the animations that they created for it is just insane they care about these small things and you can see it across the whole software it makes the experience of using the phone especially with a 120 hertz display much better iPhones in general also are very smooth my actual and main reasons why I stayed on iOS are two first of all I wanted that full Apple ecosystem experience of course I got the Apple watch the Mac book, the AirPods, a lot of accessories as well. And I've been loving the experience so far. The continuity, how things move from the iPhone to the Mac and vice versa. Simple things like these that make the Apple ecosystem experience so much better. Yes, of course, a lot of people get it for the iMessage and it's good. Best messaging app I've ever used. Some might also use it for FaceTime. Really great quality, not gonna lie. But Apple ecosystem is not just iMessage and FaceTime. It's a lot more than that. I love the way that when I have my AirPods on and connect it to the phone and move to the laptop, a small pop-up notification tells me if I wanna connect the AirPods to the Mac. And of course it connects to the Apple Watch simultaneously. One of the great things too, copying on the Mac and PC on the iPhone and vice versa, opening a web page on the iPhone and then continuing on the Mac. The list goes and on and on. My other reason why I stayed on Apple, it's not actually the software, it's the hardware. Apple is known for their quality hardware. Their speakers, for example, are the best in any smartphone and on the Mac are the best in any laptop. The video camera on the iPhone is hands down the best in any smartphone. I still can't find a phone that can record better video than the iPhone. The quality of the video, the skin tones, the colors, in general are incomparable with any other smartphone. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. iOS has a lot of annoying things that still bother me even after two years of use. Let me list some of them for you. Till this day, if you want to change some settings in an app, we need to go to the main settings app. I miss my notification center on Android. It's well thought out, well put together, way better than iOS. For example, if I receive a DM on Instagram, I go there, I reply to that message. The notification is still in the notification center. I have a long list of old notifications that don't go away by themselves. And for gaming, by the way, I still hate that I don't have a gaming mode. Yes, I can create one in some way or another, guided access or focus mode, but it's still not 
quite as Android. Now, I didn't say I won't go back to Android for nothing. I love what Apple is doing with their products. It's the reason I keep using Apple currently. AirDrop, as simple as it is, it's a great freaking feature. Sharing photos and videos with friends after we hang out has never been easier. CarPlay, on the other hand, is way much better than Android Auto. I started using CarPlay last year with my car and it has been the best experience on the road. One of the best things as well on iOS that is way better than Android is software updates. I know on Pixel you can get the latest and greatest as soon as it comes out, but on Samsung, for example, you wait months, if not years, to get the latest update if you ever get an update in the first place. Me and my brother that has an iPhone 8 Plus get the same update in the same time. He's been using his 8 Plus for the past five years. It's been holding on very well. The battery is still good. The chip is much better than a lot of other chips in the market. He didn't miss out on the latest features on iOS because he got them with everyone else. So the instant software updates and the longevity of the phone itself makes the phone much more worth it for the buck than any other smartphone. In that same year that we got the iPhone 8 Plus, we got the Galaxy S8. Yes, of course, the S8 looked much better, better quality display, more modern design. Samsung stopped releasing software updates for the S8 long time ago, and I've had it on the rack not being used for a long time. It's lagging a lot, it's unusable. We can see the longevity difference between the two. Now, what I want you to get out of this video after Apple announcing iOS 16 and the iPhone 14 lineup for most people, the iPhone is actually the better option. Yes, it's expensive, but money for the buck is on point. You're gonna get a quality phone, quality cameras, speakers, screen, and it's gonna last you for a long time. It's a full package, and I don't see any other Android phone that has this full package. The only Android phone right now that I might move to from iOS is the Galaxy Fold. This is on a different category. I'm not going to fully emerge myself in the Apple ecosystem because I want to keep a way out. That's why I am keep using a lot of the Google services instead of Apple services. And that's been it for today's episode. I'm going to be doing a lot more episodes about the iPhone 14 Pro when it comes out. So consider subscribing. Thank you for watching. And don't forget that life is all about love and dance. See you.